Other example for us are the developments in the Öresund region. And in that sense, I'm pleased to introduce to you Bengt Streifert. Bengt Streifert is advisor of the Öresund University and director and CEO of the Öresund Science Region, encompassing 12 universities, 2,500 companies, and regional and local authorities in eastern Denmark and the southern part of Sweden. So, Binational. It's a perfect example for our own Meuse Rhine region and also for the Brainport Southeastern Netherlands Initiative, I would say. Ladies and gentlemen, please a warm applause to Bank Seifert. Thank you so very much for, for, for your introduction. Um, as a, as a matter of fact, I'm no longer a director. I resigned voluntarily um, uh, for age reasons. I'd been it for, for 10 years, and um, if you can make it eight years, it's, it's thought to be reasonably good. 10 years is a bit too much, so to say. So I'm uh, now acting as... Um, um, special advisor for them, and they may follow my advices if they like. If they don't like them, they'll do whatever they like, and I uh, can only uh, sit back and say, too bad you didn't listen to me first. Okay. Um, thank you very much for, for uh, the fact that I'm, I'm here. I was here 15 years ago at the University of Maastricht for a conference on uh, listen uh, cross-border universities that was um, all European and organized by by this university and an organization that was called Alma at uh, uh, that time here. I don't think Alma exists any longer, and it's more Elam or, or something like it here. Um, I'm going to try to tell you the history of Ersund University and Ersund Science Region, uh, <clears throat> what we uh, have done, and um, the challenges and, and possible successes, etc. I won't go into detail as regards organization. Uh, the organization of something that is cross an international border, cross regional borders, cross borders between universities and um, industry and across all other borders. Such an organization is impossible to, to understand for uh, almost everybody but a, a handful and um, uh, most of them are going to be retired now. So I'll try to, to go into to, to what we've done here instead here. <clears throat> Just uh, very short about Ersund region. As you know, it's Denmark, eastern, uh, southern Sweden. It's Sealand and the small island south of Sealand, and it's Skåne. <clears throat> it has about 3.5 million people, and the three big cities are Copenhagen, Malmö, Lund, and if you add Roskilde just to the west of Copenhagen, uh, you have an urban area with about 2.5 million people. It takes about one hour, um, if you're lucky with traffic, to drive from the western point to the eastern point. There are about 10 universities uh, on that knowledge axis, as we sometimes call it, with something like um, 150,000 up to 200,000 students, depending on how you define uh, students, uh, universities, polytechnics, wh whatever, uh, here. 
It's, um, no, we'll, we'll skip that. Prior to uh, the 1980s, this was one of the heartlands of industry in Scandinavia. Shipbuilding, the pride of uh, the regions uh, here, manufacturing, textiles, food industries, breweries, etc. All uh, industries that, as you know, have disappeared from the surface, more or less. Uh, yeah, gone to wherever. And the 1980s saw us as an industrial wasteland and un, uh, ruled by unemployment and by uh, those who were outside the labor market because of, of uh, their education or because they were too old, laid off, uh, etc. Uh, here. And uh, we were told by these economic uh, professors uh, that um, regions, cities rise and they fall and new cities come instead. And sorry, uh, you have uh, gone down and uh, tried to make the best of it. Perhaps tourism could be something for you. But things changed and that was in the late 19. 90s something, and I've, I've uh, uh, written here a, a number of causes. They are not in any hierarchical order uh, or anything. Uh, they're like, like this, because I don't know, and I don't think anybody else knows exactly the, the relationship between them, what is cause and what is effect here. Um, <clears throat> the most important reason, though, I think, cause for, for the change were well, the geopolitical changes and I think history will uh, point more and more to that and what do I mean by geopolitical uh, changes mainly uh, the fall of the Soviet Union and uh, the Iron Curtain the unification of Germany the three Baltic states Poland etc. That changed the whole nature of the Baltic Sea and Copenhagen and Øresund are the gateway to the Baltic Sea uh, and have always regarded themselves as sort of the queen of the um, Baltic. And before the fall of the Soviet Union, there was no Baltic Ocean. It was um, the borderland between NATO and the Warsaw Pact. Okay. And at the same time, almost in 1994, I think, Sweden joined the EU. Uh, without Sweden joining the EU, I don't think we would have had an Öresund region. Then Sweden would have um, more or less joined um, Norway uh, instead. But the EU won with 52% against 48, and uh, it's not better now. Uh, it's still something like um, 52, 54 against um, uh, 44, 44, 46. And sometime I could tell you uh, <laughs> more about these, these uh, rather interesting facts. It were the cities, the growing cities that w voted yes, and it was rural Sweden like rural Norway, rural Finland, that um, didn't want to join Europe here. Okay, and as a consequence, we had the Öresund Bridge. Uh, we had a lot of money invested in infrastructure. This meant that there came a lot of money into the region for building, but that money, so to say, spread round, round. Uh, we had a surge of knowledge industries. Uh, leading among them were the pharma industries. Uh, Novo Nordic is the most famous of them in diabetes. Uh, and as for electronics, um, Ericsson has its main uh, research 
facility in Lund. Bluetooth, by the way, was um, created in Lund some years ago uh, here. Uh, we found, I'll say a few words about this, the Öresund Science Region, but I'll take formation of regions uh, first, I think. Um, at the same time, both Denmark and Sweden were regionalized a bit from being very centralized um, uh, states. Uh, more and more power were given out to, to regions in the, in the periphery, so to say. And in many ways, um, Copenhagen is in the periphery of Denmark. Uh, southern Sweden is definitely a periphery in, in Sweden uh, here. We got a new university in Malmö here. And with all this, um, there was a creation of a university network, the Öresund University, at that time comprising 12 universities. It's gone a bit down and up depending on uh, uh, amalgamations and uh, things like, like that, yeah, how you define a university. And, some have disappeared, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this was, it's difficult to, to really state the reasons why, why this university network was created. Uh, it took, I was there, it took some four or five hours and a dinner uh, to do so, uh, a dinner where we had enough wine and uh, brandy for coffee, uh, and all the um, vice-chancellors of the universities, and afterwards we, we got them all into a room and said, hey, we have to use the fact that it is a, an Erson University connected by a bridge. It wasn't built yet, but, but it was on the way of being built. We have to, to uh, uh, use this. Uh, you can win a lot of money by, by doing so, and you don't have to pay much either. And it took some four or five months, and we had it in place. It had to pass through all the legal systems, the bureaucracies, etc., etc. But, but, but um, we succeeded. And the next step was the formation of Ersund Science Region, which was the interface of the universities to mainly industry, but also regions and municipalities. And we'll go on to this. You see, it's difficult to say what is the, the real um, sequence of, of events. It sort of took place all at the same time during, now, after, I had been to this Maastricht meeting in 1996, um, and uh, it was uh, a pioneering spirit that um, ruled uh, the area, if I may call it the area, at, at uh, that time. Nobody cared too much about all the problems that would come. Uh, they probably were uh, either understood them or said, we'll, we'll cope with, with the problems as, as, as they, they come. Um, the lead was taken by the two big universities, Copenhagen and Lund, both centuries old. Copenhagen is about 600 years old. Lund is 360 years old with uh, complete traditional uh, universities with uh, all that that means, as, as you probably know if you are familiar with the university world here. Okay, let's go on here. This is what we started uh, to do here. Um, the focus was on the creation of innovation and cooperation uh, platforms. Uh, here in a 
number of selected uh, strategy areas. The selection of areas came from bottom up. That is, you had or we had to have industries that were interested in joining. That was a number one, so to say. If not, no way. Uh, you had to have a couple of big brand names in industry in order to create credibility in it. Uh, for instance, uh, the big pharma companies, uh, Novo Nordic, Astra, and whatever the, their names were at, at the time. You had to have big IT companies like um, Ericsson, Nokia, uh, etc. That created uh, credibility. With those names, yes, we could uh, bring along universities and regional authorities, so to say, um, came, came along automatically. Uh, this has now expanded and we're into phase two, as you see, with new types of structures and it's a, a how should I say, more modern uh, areas here with particularly nanomaterials, sciences, but also the softer areas, media, uh, multimedia, uh, games, we've tried games uh, here, uh, cooperation with innovation systems, science parks around uh, the, the sound here, and a lot of cooperation with heavy, expensive scientific infrastructure. Okay, challenges, problems is, is another word for it. Uh, money. If you have an organization with so many owners, so to say, uh, it's very difficult to get uh, the small sums that you need to, to, to operate it. Uh, there are all different rules with money, etc., etc. We have three currencies, Euro, Danish Krona, Swedish Krona, etc. It, it's quite complicated here. Also, governance. Who's the boss? Well, we tried to always have the vice chancellors of the Copenhagen University and Lund University as the um, chairman or presidents of, of everything, so to say. Uh, here they had authority. Nobody really could challenge them. They were uh, not political, uh, etc. cetera, here. Uh, we have problems with national balances and strategies. What will happen if southern Sweden and Copenhagen grow faster than the Stockholm uh, region? What will Stockholm say then? Well, they'll probably, Sweden as a whole will probably say, no, we have to balance the whole country. We can't only grow in the south, which will only profit the Danes. Uh, Denmark has also to have a national balance between Western Denmark, Jutland, and uh, the Copenhagen area. Uh, the Danish governments are always dominated by, by ministers from Jutland for different um, uh, reasons here. So these uh, balances and strategies are quite complicated. Top-down question mark, how much should be top down, how much should be bottom up? Huh? If you have a big pyramid here, it's very difficult to have everything bottom up. You have to have some top down, but the, it, it's complicated. Successes. Uh, regional growth and optimism is very good. Uh, the Urson region is now the uh, richest region in the northern countries, apart from Norway, that is with the oil money, richest, um, lowest unemployment, etc. All good figures are highest in the Ersun region. All bad figures are, are lowest uh, with us. Uh, we've had a huge increase in the number of events, conferences, uh, etc. Uh, here. There's a lot of uh, integrated um, commuting now, um, workplaces uh, here, 
mainly it's um, Swedes going to Copenhagen either to very skilled jobs in the pharma industries, for instance. Um, about half of the managing directors of small uh, bio companies in the Copenhagen area come from, from Sweden. It's also the low income jobs in the service or tourist uh, sector, uh, mainly uh, Swedes. Uh, we've had uh, quite good OECD evaluations and EU evaluations. We won the EU uh, Radio Star Award um, in the year 2008. We've had, and now this is what I'm coming to as an end, and these are the really big successes, at least if you, you come from the knowledge sector of, of the, the region here. Huge investments in uh, scientific infrastructure uh, and profile projects uh, here. And as a, as a consequence, the city of Lund will double its size within the next two decades here. And let's have a look at this. Max 4, the new light source. Can you see it? Well, it's the biggest investment in Sweden ever in scientific infrastructure. Here we won it together with the Danes, together with the promise of new companies, good innovation systems, um, fertile ground to put it in, etc. This is coming together with this, which is even bigger. It's one of the biggest EU investments or European, I'd say it's not the EU, European investments in uh, uh, science infrastructure um, ever. Max4 and ESS will combined be probably uh, the biggest uh, infrastructures of its kind in the world. Denmark, Sweden, the Öresund region, uh, fertile ground to, to put them in and a very, uh, um, earned a lot of lobby work, to put it that way. Uh, and the Third here is not really of the same kind. It's called Ideon Medicon Village. Uh, it is a transformation of, an, of a pharmaceutical company, AstraZeneca, that decided to move its whole facility from Lund to Gothenburg and other facilities from the UK and etc. etc. And we threw uh, local money from uh, the building industry managed to, to create something new out of this Eden Medicon village. If it functions, and I say if, it will create uh, a surplus each year that will go to medical uh, research uh, here. These three together will create a huge uh, area of um, science, innovation, uh, companies, universities, whatever you like, uh, with cooperation with uh, Copenhagen, because some of the facilities will, will be in, in uh, Copenhagen um, here. Well, that was all. And what could you learn from this? Or what have we learned? It is that um, it's very difficult with strategic planning, long uh, range uh, planning. Um, a couple of months ago, I read the strategic plans that were seven years old, and there was not a word about all these facilities. Huh? <laughs> Nobody knew. And now they're changing the whole region with this huge um, impact that they will have. Um, Ideon Medicon Village was organized more or less, some say, 
uh, also during a dinner, and where a, a very rich builder uh, said, okay, I'll, I'll pay for it. Um, and uh, so flexibility and uh, mental preparedness to do something new when the occasion comes, because we know that there will always be uh, occasions that will come. It's only to, to try to grab, grab them and use them. Thank you very much.